sure, maybe Trump watches guerrilla documentaries and sits in front of the TV, but you can, it's, <laughs> there was no transmission tower built on the South Lawn. How do people believe this? The Gorilla Channel. The Gorilla Channel. I've made videos before talking about how everything is fake, about, it, even if it's not fake, it's misleading. So many journalists will write a story and use assumptive language because they want you to assume something is true and that way they don't have to actually lie. And this is part of the reason why I just don't believe anything anymore. Uh, for the most part, I don't believe anything. Recently, a book has come out called Fire and Fury. It's about Donald Trump's White House. Apparently, Trump tried to stop them from releasing it and then they decided to release it early. And it's been the subject of a lot of contentious debate, I suppose, with people on the right supporting Trump saying, this book is a farce, these stories are just not true. And the people on the left saying, this is a, a true glimpse into the Trump White House. CNN has an op-ed, a Trump biographer reviews Fire and Fury. In Fire and Fury Inside the Trump White House, author Michael Wolff offers a caricature of the president as, quote, an idiot surrounded by clowns. It's an incomplete and unsatisfying sketch, but consider that his subject, Donald Trump, has described himself as a character in a comic book and Wolf's work can be regarded as truer than the president would have us believe. Wolf is at his most accurate and incisive when he observes that many of the accounts of events offered by president's team in Trumpian fashion are baldly untrue. He then argues for our indulgence as he tries to describe reality. Trump is ripe for criticism. There's a lot of things that you can heavily criticize Trump for. We can look at policy, and the one things I usually go to are foreign policy, right? Drone strikes in Yemen, weapons to the Saudis, missile strike in Syria. These are, are serious things to consider. In fact, one of the first things he did was a drone strike in Yemen that resulted in the death of an eight-year-old American girl. But the media too often wants to focus on Trump's character, the things that he tweets. And I'll, and I'll even say this too, Trump tweets some pretty, I don't know what the right word is for it, but he tweets some pretty strange things. I think it's this the easiest way to put it. In fact, one of the things he just tweeted this morning Actually, throughout my life, my two greatest assets have been mental stability and being, like, really smart. Crooked Hillary Clinton also played these cards very hard and, as everyone knows, went down in flames. I went from very successful businessman to top TV star. And then he adds, to President of the United States on my first try. I think that would qualify as not smart but genius and a very stable genius at that. You guys, if you watch my channel, you know I'm not one to rag on Trump. I think that there's a lot of legitimate criticism that gets overlooked because too many people are worried about the way he speaks instead of the things he's doing. Yes, there are critics who talk about the things he's doing, but too many people are focused on what he's doing on Twitter, and maybe that's the point. People often said that Trump's playing 4D chess, and other people say, no, he's not, he's just stupid. But you have to admit, whether or not you think he's playing the long con, when he tweets, the entire media sphere shuts down to listen to what he's talking about and then ridicule him for it. But I digress, let's get back to fire and fury and why I just plain don't believe anything anymore. The Daily Caller has the story. The Gorilla Channel, fake news brigade falls for hilarious spoof of Michael Wolff's Trump book. This is serious right now. I'm going to read to you the fake excerpt from the Michael Wolff book, Fire and Fury. This is a fake excerpt, okay? I don't think I even need to tell you it's fake. Let me just read it. On his first night in the White House, President Trump complained that the TV in his bedroom was broken because it didn't have the Gorilla Channel. Trump seemed to be under the impression that a TV channel existed that screened nothing but Gorilla-based content 24 hours a day. To appease Trump, White House staff compiled a number of Gorilla documentaries into a makeshift Gorilla Channel broadcast into Trump's bedroom from a hastily constructed transmission tower on the South Lawn. However, Trump was unhappy with the channel they had created, moaning that it was boring because, quote, the gorillas aren't fighting. Staff edited out the parts of the documentaries where gorillas weren't hitting each other, and at last, the president was satisfied. Quote, on some days, he'll watch the gorilla channel for 17 hours straight, unquote. An insider told me, he kneels in front of the TV with his face about four inches from the screen and says encouraging things to the gorillas like, quote, the way you hit that other gorilla was good. I think he thinks the gorillas can hear him. Do I need to even 
bother explaining why this is so absurdly false? I do, because people believed this was real. People believed this was actually in a book that this actually happened. Before I even go on, can I just say, it says that they, they constructed a transmission tower on the South Lawn. There's no transmission tower on the South Lawn. You can just go look. But people still believed this was a real excerpt. At what point would you have not noticed? I mean, if they built a transmission tower on the South Lawn to broadcast guerrilla documentaries to Trump, you'd think somebody would have said, hey, look at that tower they're building on the South Lawn. But Scott Dworkin, a Democratic strategist said, Trump was mad because TV wasn't getting the guerrilla channel. It doesn't exist. So staff made videos of guerrillas for him. He thought it was boring because they weren't always fighting, so they edited to just fights. He then watched and spoke to TV as if guerrillas could hear him 17 hours per day. A Sky News journalist tweeted, The Trump book says the US President Trump watches guerrilla docos for hours and crawls around on the floor acting out guerrilla stuff. Podcaster Toure stated that he didn't believe the Guerrilla Channel story from Wolf's book. In a follow-up tweet, he thanked his followers for telling him it was a parody. You couldn't tell it was a parody? I'm sorry. If people are willing to believe this story, that they transmit, look, sure, maybe Trump watches Guerrilla documentaries and sits in front of the TV, but you can, it's, <sighs> there was no transmission tower built on the South Lawn. How do people believe this? And if people believe something like this, even as outrageously false as it is, what other nonsense do they believe? Do you remember the koi fish story where the, the prime minister of Japan threw the, the fish food in and then Trump did the same? And then all of the press started ragging about how Trump had no idea what he was doing. He was overfeeding fish. Think about stories, okay? Think about stories that sound legitimate. If you, if you hate Trump, if you support Trump, maybe there's a story where you're like, yeah, that one sounds true. Trump did something. But now I question whether or not that's even true. Because journalists, people actually believe a transmission tower was built on the South Lawn? You gotta be kidding me, man. You can just go look at it. You could say, hey, you walk to the South Lawn, is there a transmission tower there? There never was. Clearly this is not real. Actor Don Cheadle said, I concede the first point, and like you and others, don't know what he said to get the story. I'm more troubled by things like the Gorilla Channel tale, which rings false to me. Like someone told Wolf the story just to see if he'd print it, but hard to know with clown banana poop. You see, Don Cheadle, I think Don Cheadle's great. I think he's a funny guy. Man, I love Iron Man. He is, he is a fantastic war machine. I, I think he does a great job, great work. And I actually, I want to give him a little bit of praise here because it, he just, he refused to believe it. You know, th this, this fake news, I mean, look, let's be real, the Guerrilla Channel thing was supposed to be funny and people believed it, but Don Cheadle was resistant and, and a lot of people warped, a lot of people just started spewing it out, not even thinking twice. But he said, this rings false to me. And I have to admit, you know, when you're surrounded by people saying over and over again that it's true and you're skeptical, you, you get confused. You, know, you ever feel this way where you're like, no, I, I can't be the only one who thinks this is fake. So I, I respect that of Don Cheadle. At the same time, come on, man. Just, just man up and flat out be like, this story is ridiculous and it can't possibly be true. King's College London professor Christine Chang admitted she thought the Guerrilla Channel was real because Trump is beyond parody. This Guerrilla Channel thing is utterly ridiculous, but I believed it at first until we got to the 17 hours part because Trump is beyond parody. Yes, folks, that's where we're at right now. No, no, you don't get to say that. Yes, we could claim to be beyond parody, but beyond parody is when Trump tweets that he's like really smart, you know, and when he's a genius, that's beyond parody. You'd never expect a president to tweet that he is like really smart. I, I'm, I'm being serious. That's exactly what Trump said. He said, my two greatest assets have been mental stability and being like really smart. That is beyond parody. I have to be honest, when I saw him tweet that, I really did think that somebody must have tweeted from his account or something. And that might be true. We've heard in the past that other people may be tweeting from his account, but that's still within the realm of actual reality. But to believe that White House staffers edited together guerrilla fights, constructed a broadcast tower, and beamed the footage into the, the president's room so he can watch TV is just, my, my God, this is it. This, this is the apex of absurdity. According to Politico, 
Eric Garland, an internet personality with nearly 175,000 followers, known for his sometimes conspiratorial commentary about Trump-Russia ties, said, Damn it, guys, I got totally punked on the Gorilla Channel thing. But when you've already gotten to, quote, eating KFC in bed, unquote, I mean, we're through the looking glass. Thanks to all who called me out, we keep it clean and desa free at Game Theory HQ. Now, I appreciate that he came out and said he got punked. I appreciate that. And, he, and, he, and he's a good sport about it. But can I just say that going from eating KFC in bed, which I'm, I'm sure at some point most people in the developed world, be it the West or whatever, whatever city has eaten food in bed before, that's just not that absurd. If Trump ordered fast food and ate in bed, I'd be like, sure, I've done that before. How is that weird? Okay, so let's say eating KFC in bed is weird. Sure. But to go from Trump ate KFC in his bed to White House staffers constructed a broadcast tower on the South Lawn to broadcast guerrilla fights to the president. The main point I want to make with all of this, for one, this might be one of the most absurd things I have ever heard in my life. And it's also truly terrifying. Look, I'm laughing, but I, I gotta add, it's also kind of a nervous laugh, all right? Keep in mind, there are, there are journalists, there are personalities, there are politicians, there are strategists working in politics who really believe this. And what that means, to reiterate, think about actual news that sounds likely to be true. Maybe eating KFC in bed isn't true. How do we know? If, if, if President Trump tweets something, we know he tweeted it, right? I mean, somebody else may have tweeted it, but you know, we know his account put out this statement and, it, and it's attributed to the president. But we hear so much news from so many outlets that we begin to question it. If you're someone who hates Trump, if you find yourself on the left, you want to know why people don't trust the mainstream media? Because of this. Because an obvious bit of satire is taken as truth and people say, oh, but it's, it's because Trump is beyond parody. I'm sorry. When you fall for the Onion articles, when you fall for a story about guerrilla channels, it's, uh, something, something is wrong here. And then you have to realize that there's a lot of other news that is likely fake too. It's like the Galman amnesia effect. That when you read the news and it's a story about something in which you're an expert, you say, ooh, this, this story isn't true. And I know because, you know, it's a, let's say it's a story about carpenters and you're a carpenter, you'll be like, oh, that story is way wrong. That journalist doesn't know anything about carpentry. But then you go to the next story and you assume it's true. And this is exactly what's going on. Let this be another example of why you need to have less faith in the media. I'm not saying totally distrust the media. I'm not saying totally distrust politicians or anything like that. I'm saying there's a lot of people who just outright believe everything they hear from people they trust. No matter who you're associating with, no matter who you follow, no matter what channel you watch, no matter what story you read, even my channel, you should not trust it 100%. I, I think you should give everybody 60%. And if they prove to be untrustworthy, take it back. Take it way back. I, I just don't know what to believe anymore. I mean, I'm glad that people finally realized the gorilla story was, was nonsense, but it scares me to think that there are probably much more important stories. And this is one of the perfect examples of just what is absolutely wrong with our media today. The gorilla channel. But let me know what you think in the comments below, how you feel about the gorilla channel nonsense. It's, it's funny and scary at the same time. I worry. I laugh, but I worry. If you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter at TimCast. You can support my work by going to TimCast.com forward slash donate. Give whatever you'd like or give nothing at all. My videos are always free and available every day at 4 p.m. And subscribe to my second channel. In the description below, I have a link to my second channel. And this is usually reserved for inane commentary. Typically, if I'm getting into a Twitter fight or there's something that's much less important, I will talk about it on my second channel, but keep in mind it is also a backup channel. If anything happens to this channel, that's where I will be posting. So again, go subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you tomorrow at four.